By the end of this video, you're going to know the three worst things about Honkai Star Rail. Because if you thought filler patches made the game worse, or lack of content made the game worse, you'd probably be right. But you'd be missing the three other major problems with this game that really make me hate it. The last one really gets on my nerves, so be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree. Number one is the free to play experience. I don't like this because it forces you to skip banners and I know that this is a gotcha kind of niche thing but I can still complain about it right in a game where team composition is so important like Honkai Star Rail where you have to pull for units that synergize with each other to get the most out of those units unless you're pulling e6 on everything it's extremely difficult when in patches like 2.6 we get face shower and link shot and I wanted them both but I needed Linksha to complete my Super Break archetype team. And I could also move Gallagher over to my Acheron team and so on and so forth. I completely missed out on a great DPS unit and a very strong archetype in this game, which is the follow-up attack. This is a problem because newer players or players not seasoned in the gacha space will often make mistakes and pull for something they don't necessarily need to clear uh, end game on their account with. Star Rail is my second gacha game ever and I've played Genshin Impact before but I never really got into it on the level that I did with Star Rail so this was a brand new experience for me. That being said I had no idea who to pull for for my account that could help me clear end game and I feel like I thirsted for Kafka like everyone else did. All jokes aside Unless you're really prepared to spend money or know how gachas work, the new player experience can be very, very daunting. Now you might be wondering, what does the game do about this problem? A solution that I came up with was to add a different currency other than Stellar J's that can only be used to redeem standard tickets. It would be very, very nice for new players and people who are very low investment in the game to have the option to basically pull on the standard banner pretty freely. Use that currency, build up their units. If they don't want to pull on um, limited time banners, they can do so. I understand why they couldn't do this in the beginning to slow progress of players during the game, but now we're at a point where I think this should be a viable option. Now, just when you thought it couldn't get worse, it does. The second major problem I have with this game, which again comes back to the gotcha formula, is the banner release order. I have pulled for every single Nihility unit in this game in hoping that DOT would be great again. <laughs> I have been wrong every single time. Now, I'm not complaining. I love my Nihility unit. I love Acheron. I love Kafka. But the fact that I basically pull Black Swan into Acheron, into Jiaocho, without getting a break, you have one patch to save is just not enough. It's just not enough. And I probably will be pulling for the next four limited units so my account can actually catch up and my wallet is going to say very mean things to me. This is a problem for players who would like to pull multiple things that do not have the resources to do so. So they might not be able to clear endgame and if you are a newcomer then good luck. Welcome to the gacha experience. Now, to be honest, I don't really know how to solve this issue. The only thing that I could think of is to, whenever a new unit reruns, uh, or whenever a new unit comes out, do reruns of characters that actually make sense that will actually support this unit. For example, we have Sunday coming up. We should do a rerun of Jing Wan as well. I know they're not going to do that, they're going to separate the banners, but it is what it is. As a side note, we should also get 10 pulls for each phase. So 10 pulls for Sunday, 10 pulls for Fugue. 
that's just something that I think that we should get. Am I being too greedy? I don't think so. Before we get into the worst thing about Honkai Star Rail, let's talk about an honourable mention that I feel many people will agree. There is no official PvP mode in Honkai Star Rail. Hear me out. A PvP mode could be another way for players to get stellar jades and would give players more incentive to not just log in for dailies and then get off. But Casper, how would they balance this? Simple. Have all players have access to every 5 star unit in the game at E0, to which they will have to draft, so pick and ban, but they will not have access to any signature light cone. They will be banned. You can choose every main stat for every relic which will come with maxed out stats but the substats will be randomized and you get two chances to re-roll per relic. After drafting is complete we go to a random pure fiction, MRC or APOC shadow stage where the winner will be determined by the fastest clear. And finally the worst thing in Honkai Star Rail is the end game. More specifically the flexibility end game requires from your account. Because I'm essentially forced to skip banners, I don't have the units that would help me clear endgame efficiently. Follow-up follow attack teams are really good right now, and the only real unit I have is March 7th because I skip for Feishao for Lingcha to complete my super break team. On top of that, I finally caved and I spent some money to secure Lingcha and her light cone because I was losing 50-50s left and right. Until I get units that can clear the game effectively, I'm losing out on some of those sweet, sweet stellar jades that we get from Endgame, which we know we all want as many as possible. More stellar jades means more pulls, and more pulls means more chances to secure those units that can help you clear Endgame. My solution to this is make a more customized Endgame. Wouldn't it be nice if you could choose which pure fiction slash MRC slash apocalyptic shadows mechanic you get to do instead of the mandatory refresh to figure out everything imagine the light the life cycle still goes on right but you get to choose which one you get to do so instead of it refreshing and it going to follow up attack you can choose to do dot or you could choose to do super break and you're not limited by the mechanics of endgame i think that would be a great addition to the game and it would not be random and you can always get rewards so that you can finally build the team of your dream and the waifus and husbanders of your dream and there you have it the three worst things in honkai star Rail. if you're playing deadlock 2 you should probably watch this video to see who's op and who needs a buff make sure to check it out